those two points, right? <coughs> However, if you graph it using slope intercept, ignore this part for a second. Slope intercept says that this intercept is two, right there. You go down one, over one. Down one, over one. Do you see that you get the same points? Same exact line there. So either way you want to graph that, I don't care. I'm going to give you one like this on your test. Uh, that way you, you have some options here. If you like slope intercept, great. Use slope intercept, it's fine. If you like the cover up method, you're going to have to do a little bit of work with it. Just add the x over, but then you use a cover up method. So far, so good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Same thing would happen here. If you did, the, if you wanted the cover up method, what would you have to do? Yeah, you would do that. Negative two x plus y equals five. Here it would say that your x-intercept is negative five halves. Negative five halves is negative two and a half. That's okay. Y-intercept is five. You could graph that on your line, or you could come back up here and use slope-intercept. What is your intercept here, ladies and gentlemen? Your, no, your intercept is not 2. Your intercept is 5. That's right. Your intercept is 5. Your slope is how much? That means up or down? Up 2 over 1. You would get that line either way. Notice how this is going to cross at 2 and a half. You guys see what I'm talking about? If you wanted your y intercept or your x intercept, it would be 5 divided by negative 2. That's negative 1, 2 and a half. If you want your y-intercept, that's 5. That's where we're crossing anyway. They will work either way. Now, of course, you're going to clean this up and make, a, well, these would be solid lines. But you're going to check your 0, 0 in each case. You're going to find your shading, and you would have shaded this graph. Uh, in this case, let's see. Number, well, which one was number 1? Oh, I forgot to use different colored markers. Darn it. Number 1 is the one. This is number 1? Yeah. yeah. 0 is bigger than 2. That's yeah. false. So you have this way. Uh, zero is less than five, that's true, we have this way, so I'm, I'm pretty sure, is this one shaded? Is this right? Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah? Are you just agreeing with me because I'm a teacher? Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's that one. That would be your shaded portion. Right? Double check that for me, let me know if I'm right, because I just did that really quick in my head. Yeah. It is right? Yeah. I love it when I'm right. Don't you love it when you're right? <laughs> Right. Would you raise your hand and feel okay graphing linear inequalities? Sweet deal. That's the last thing that's going to be on your test. So if you can do this, combined with the chapter 8 stuff, you're going to be good on Monday's test. Now today, for the rest of our day, we're going to start chapter 10. Chapter 10 will not, again, will not be on your, your test on Monday. What we're going to do with chapter 10 is do the first section. It's just an introduction to some square roots and some radicals, some ideas, some radical ideas. <laughs> Uh, and that will be on your, it will start on this next week after your test. Any questions before we get going on that stuff? I did have one. Yeah. Um, it's just like whenever you have um, the number at the end being like less than or equal to zero, yeah. like it makes both of them zero, zero, so I'm just like, how do you... Right, exactly. When, um, if your view last time, when we were here last time, we said if that's ever equal to zero on the right hand side, such as this. If that were to be zero, you'd get x is zero, y equals zero, that gives you only one point. You cannot graph a line with one point, therefore you must use slope intercept. Okay. You have to use it. Uh, I think I gave you an example like that in the last part of class, so we'll do that one uh, last time. Okay.